Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for another Subscriber Designs video, and we start, as usual, with a little thing before the big thing. And this is an interesting little biplane, sent to me by Heliosphere, which, it's, it's a really cool plane, because, well, firstly, it's a biplane, and secondly, it uses normal jet engines with a reverse thrust to kind of pull it along as if it was a propeller plane. Propeller plane, which I think is really cool. So let's just fly this around a bit because it's a really fun little plane. I messed, I've been messing around with it for like half an hour because it's just really fun and it looks a bit janky when it uh, kind of puts all the exhaust forward, but that goes away as it speeds up. Um, but yeah, it's like super maneuverable. And once we take off, you'll be able to see. And I just, yeah, it's got like four cockpits, I guess. So one facing backwards and three facing forwards. Guess that could be useful for, you know, shooting people down, or maybe it could be a science plane. But yeah, it's just nice and maneuverable and super easy to fly. Like, it just rolls around like crazy. And I like the wing design as well. Um, obviously, biplane, but this kind of almost forward facing V, and then these are mounted on a little wing connector. I think that's really cool. And it is just generally just a really nice plane. I love stuff like this. Just. Oh, I'm gonna crash it into the VAB. And it's also, oh, I thought it, oh, it took down the VAB. Yeah, pretty powerful plane. Anyway, let's just uh, mess around with it a little longer and then after that we'll go and see the really, really crazy thing I got sent, which uh, <laughs> is pretty cool. Um, I might end up kamikaze into that tank over there. But yeah, it's a really interesting use of the engines. I never really thought of doing it like this. It's really cool, because obviously there's no propellers in the stock game, which I really think there should be. It would be really cool to be able to do like a, some kind of propeller system um, for, I guess because it's a space game, it would be like, you can't use these ever. <laughs> on lathe though, how cool would that be? A solar powered plane? I mean, I know you can use ion engines, but they don't really work in atmosphere anymore since the game got all realistic. <laughs> but yeah, the wing setup's really good as well because it is fairly realistic. When you pitch, it just uses the rear elevons. When you roll, it just uses the ones on the main wings. And that's how real planes do it. They don't move all their control surfaces at the same time. I'm sure most people know this, but if you, in KSB, the default is just everything always does everything. So when you pitch all of the things, all of the control surfaces pitch when you roll, all of them roll. But that's not how it works, mostly because that would be really actually difficult to orchestrate. But also, if you're pitching and then you roll that, and say these were, um, also set to roll, it would mean you wouldn't be able to roll as much or pitch as much because your control surfaces are doing something else. Um, so yeah, I mean it's just it's just nicely designed. I really like the kind of attention to detail. It's, I, yeah, I just love this kind of stuff. So let's crash it into the tank and then move on to uh, something pretty crazy, something pretty pretty insane, something that puts my work to shame. And then oh, nailed it. That was like the best. Whoa, <laughs> that was cool. I clipped it with the wings, but. Let's see if it did any damage. This is a tank, obviously, uh, from a couple episodes back. Wow, it really damaged this. So much so that it is now a perpetual motion machine. Um, I guess something's lodged in here, flicking around. Yeah, ah, here we go. Control surfaces, freaking out, moving the tank infinitely. Ripped off a missile, damaged the armor. That's really cool. It just like, I love it when you have something that's made of like so many parts that when you hit it, it doesn't just break. It just kind of shatters a bit. That's really cool. Anyway, let's move on. So yes, the next thing we're looking at is a vehicle from Jarrett, which is a fully reusable SSTO rocket which can take 160 tons of payload to low carbon orbit, which is pretty crazy. And as you can see here, it basically is a bunch, it's a bunch of boosters in a ring with a little beam and then you hang the payload below it and it literally hauls it to orbit. And yeah, it's pretty cool, so let's take a look at this. It's being powered by vector engines, which are pretty much the best engine. You just take, basically with these, if you want a normal engine, you get a vector engine and you throttle back the um, gimbal and the tweakables bit to about, you know, 15. And that makes it a normal, very efficient, very good thrust to weight ratio, very expensive engine. But yes, this is pretty awesome. It's covered in air brakes, which may be too many, but hey, who am I to criticize? This is awesome. I kind of was thinking about doing something like this in Road to Exploration, so you may be seeing something like this, or maybe if I'm lazy, just this in Road to Exploration, um, which would be pretty cool. So yes, anyway, let's push our way on into orbit, and it did it very quickly. Obviously, that was at four times time accelerate, because, you know, it was just a launch. But hey, that's a single stage to orbit. And that's pretty awesome. So let's get rid of this payload, ditch it in orbit. 160 tons of fuel, completely uncontrollable. It was just a pretty much a dummy payload. But yeah, not bad, not bad at all. 
Um, we're just going to move out of the way of that so it doesn't drift into us and explode. Um, and then, yeah, we've got to go and land this um, after, you know, moving away from the payload. Uh, it obviously has a bunch of air brakes, a few parachutes to control its speed, but they won't land it entirely, so it will have to land on engines. Uh, yeah, so we'll just check this, and it is indeed 162 tons, and it did that without much struggle. I reckon you could push it to maybe 170, but you got a lot of fuel for landing like this. Um, so yeah, we're going to go and deorbit this. However, I do kind of screw it up a bit, and uh, basically the way I burn means that the periapsis is a little too far east, which means I'm going to not land out the KSC. With a little bit of tweaking, I could land this probably on the launch pad, which would be insane, but you know, it's quite hard to land on a launch pad. But I could land near it, and that'd be cool. Um, there was also included a refueling vehicle, which mines stuff and puts fuel in there, but I'm, I'm just looking at the rocket right now. So yeah, we're going to deorbit this. My twitchy camera work and watch it all start to burn rather savagely, the flames wrapping around the rocket. I do try the air brakes a few times, but obviously when you're going really fast they just sort of burn up. I thought it might help control the scent, but yeah, I mean it does, it is effective, it slows down the rocket, but I'm just going to let it kind of burn and fire up the engines if I'm going too fast and starting to burn up a little too much. But yeah, pretty cool, it's fairly minimal parachutes, obviously it has enough fuel to land propulsively. And you wouldn't want to land something like this all on parachutes. I probably should have turned off a few of the engines, really. There was probably an action group for that, probably in the email. I'm not sure. Um, doesn't say anything about it. But yeah, you put an action group in, turn off all those outer engines, and land quite nicely. But the thrust-to-weight ratio is quite good. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like rockets like this. You know, it's very curable. You know, it's not just like a rocket you put someone on top of. It drags something to orbit. And I think this may be necessary for some of the crazy things I have planned for road to colonization. The, uh, you know, thing after road to exploration. Anyway, we pull the parachutes and I notice they come out at an angle. That's a new thing in KSP 1.2, you can angle your parachutes. That's really cool. But anyway, let's see the actual landing at one time's time accelerate. The parachutes pull and I kind of freak out a bit and fire the engines. I've got a little lag here, I think it was probably because I was just watching something on Amazon Prime and my computer was very busy, you know, doing stuff. And there are a lot of parts, a lot of air, bri air bricks. But yeah, I do throttle up a little too much and a little too jankily, and it means that I'm kind of falling around all over the place. Um, so when I do touch the ocean, it kind of explodes, which sort of sucks. But yeah, if I'd been less terrible, I could have totally landed this and reused it. But you can see the basic premise of it, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, this is the end of the video. It's been a shorter one, just because I had a couple things to look at, and you know one of them is just a fairly quick launch. But I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to send me stuff, send it to gamingwithtape at gmail.com. It's in the description, and maybe it'll be in a video. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been at Subscriber Designs, episode 6, I think. I'll see you next time.